That's what it is. It's a shrine. Okay. Welcome, everybody. Jeff Incator Robinson here with another Codex review. This time, we're going to dip a little bit further back into what it was already released as we wait for some of these new Codexes to come out and I can make some new content for you guys. Um, I had a wonderful viewer of mine and longtime supporter of the channel request the Custodes Codex, as this is obviously very near and dear to my heart. I was happy to oblige. Um, and do a quick codex review of this. And I say quick because one of the funny themes about every one of these codex reviews so far has been me saying, ah, two hours might be too long. You guys seem to enjoy it. I enjoy it. And they always almost they almost always last about two hours on the nose. So we're going to talk about this codex. Oh, and to finish my thought, it gets pretty quick because the codex is not very big. There's not that many units. Um, so we're going to go through the codex as we have in the past. Frankie didn't join me for this one. I didn't ask him just because um, it's just custodians. And I was doing it real quick. And we're in the we're in the middle of moving, so if you look in the background and see a lot of disarray, um, that's what's going on. If you hear something in the background, that's my wife listening to a video and not not, not listening to a video. Um, but yeah, we're just going to have a discussion on the custodies. I have my models that were just finished up by Frontline Gaming as well, so we'll show those off at the end as a reward for getting through it. Okay, so this is the Collector's Edition Custodes Codex. Um, anytime an army of mine is something that I'm really, really excited about, I always get the Collector's Edition. Um, it's one of the ways that you can kind of just be like, hey, here's a little something extra Games Workshop for something, making something I love, but also it's just really cool, um, I think, in general. So as per usual with a kind of different format of doing this, I think I'm going to just go ahead and skip to the stat line pages of our guys, and then at the end I'm going to flip through the art and talk a little bit more briefly about the other part of the codex which is uh the description and, and talking about all the guys and that kind of stuff so let me get here to the army rules and the stats the army of terra um so leading off by the way i would for those of you that i guess are a little bit less familiar i will be showing off my army here towards the end but um, I've actually been playing Custodes since they have come out in 40k. I did not play them in 30k. Um, and they are one of, if not my favorite armies. They're gorgeous models. That was what initially attracted me to them. Their play style is like heroic, big, bold, aggressive. It's pretty much everything I like in uh, Warhammer 40k in terms of like play style and, and just how you go about doing it. So when all of this kind of came together and it was becoming pretty clear that that's what you were going to get out of custodies i had to i had to start getting them and as i will show you guys in a little bit i may have gotten a little bit carried away okay so first of all the army of terra they have a generic rule of everyone has a five plus and vulnerable save um and in addition they get a six up feel no pain in the psychic phase uh, it's kind of nice that it says that well it says for mortal wounds in particular so i guess it's a it's more specific but I think all psychic damage is mortal wounds, if I'm not mistaken. Um, at least the vast majority of it is. Maybe there's some like very few things that aren't, but I think it's almost. I think it is everything. So right off the bat, they get a five plus and for almost save, and then they have a feel no pain against mortal wounds in the psychic phase. This, is, of course, because they're an elite army. It's something very smart of them to have done. And then the five plus in a pure detachment improves to a four plus, or it's plus one to a minimum of three, never to go uh, to a two up in vol save. Which I think is fair. We saw what happened in the seventh edition when that happened. A um, little bit, a little bit redonkulous. So you'll see what I mean when I when I talk about fast pretty quick, because uh, the the unit diversity is rather shallow, uh, but exciting. So Captain General Trahan Valoris is the named. It's the only named character actually in the entire codex. Stat line is move six, weapon skill two, plus skill two, strength five, toughness five, wound seven, attacks five, leadership ten, save two plus. A lot of that is just the Custodes stat line. Um, they are all strength 5. They are all at least tough 5. Um, they all have at least 3 attacks. And then going up from there, depending on how cool they are, essentially. Weapon skill, blitz skill 2, that's also standard. Move 6 if they're not on something special. And save 2+. plus. You're going to see that everywhere. He comes with the Watcher's Axe and a Misericordia. Uh, and only one of these guys may be in your army. Because it's a named dude. 
Um, the Watcher's Axe for him is 24-inch twi range, Rapid Fire 1, Strength 5, AP 1, 2 damage. So it's one more strength. Okay. His axe is just a little bit more baller. Uh, the Misericordia is the standard, just one extra attack with this little stabby weapon sword. It's minus 2, 1 damage. And it always says that. So every, almost everybody can take one of these. In fact, maybe everybody can take one of these where they have one. It's just one additional attack. Uh, with that set line that I just said. And the Watcher's Axe is strength times 2, minus 3, D3 damage. Pretty darn good, especially considering it has 5 attacks. Um, the minus 3 is nice because the axes otherwise, the non-named axes are minus 2. Um, and then the D3 damage is... Would this have been nice at 3 damage? Yeah. Um, he's 250 points, so... Uh, I, I guess I'll do a general overview at, at towards the end here um he has the aramite halo which is a three plus invul legendary commander you get to reroll hits of one and wounds of one within six inches of him and then he has the moment shackle which is a cool relic that e either allows you to regain d3 wounds um at the end of the fight phase pile in and attack again or regain up to d3 command points spent when you use a stratagem so kind of interesting, the relic is cool, obviously. Um, getting D3 wounds back is very powerful. Being able to attack again is very powerful. It's actually the only access you have to that kind of a thing in this codex. A lot of other codexes have like pay three command points and you get to attack again. Custodes don't have that because that'd be probably too powerful. Um, and then regain up to D3 command points is nice as well as they come at a premium for these guys. Um, you only get to use one of those abilities and you only get to use it once in the entire game. So not over the top powerful so here's where i would tell you the general kind of stuff about him at 250 points he's very close to being correctly priced in my opinion um i think a solid 200 points is probably closer in the ballpark um a shield captain on a don eagle jet bike is 150 points moves 14 has four attacks as opposed to five obviously the weapon's not as good but the save stat line can get very similar um, seven wounds, two up save, three up invul. Um, and then the shooting on that guy is going to be actually better. Uh, obviously, Trahan is still awesome and amazing, but is he 100 points more amazing than, than that shield captain on a, on a Don Eagle jet bike? I don't know. I don't think so. Um, of course, they go up to 160, by the way, because you have to get in the Hurricane Boulders. We'll get to that in a second. I guess my point is he's very close. Um, even 220, 225, something like that would have been really welcomed. Um, you can still play him. You shouldn't see him in competitive tournament lists, but you should see him. Um, I used him in my league. He was great. He, he went toe to toe with Mortarian and actually lasted a couple rounds before finally succumbing, but it was mostly actually Magnus who was behind Mortarian lol, um, smiting the crap out of him for like four or five smite damage. Um, which is kind of a theme with custodies, but pretty cool, but probably a pass. Then we get over to the shield captain and... At this point, they're talking about the shield captain as a guy who is on foot. So very same stat line. Uh, same, actually, it is just the same, except wound six, um, but five attacks. Leadership nine as opposed to ten. This guy can take the Castellan Axe, which for them is range 24, rapid fire one, strength four, minus one, two damage as a shooting weapon. And then it's strength plus three, minus two, D3 damage in melee. Uh, they can take the spear, which is the exact same shooting profile, and then in close combat, it is strength plus one, minus three, D3 damage. Um, and then they can take the sentinel blade, which is a pistol, range 12, pistol two, strength four, no AP though, and one damage. Um, they can take a misericordia, and then if you do take the, and then the sentinel blade in close combat, strength user, minus three, D3 damage. Um... This guy gives you reroll ones within six, and then he can take a storm shield for a three plus invul. You don't see a lot of walking shield captains because um, I guess you just don't see a lot of wa walking custodies. It's a lot of bikes. Uh, but if you were going to take uh, a shield captain, typically they're on a bike just because it just gives so much more to them. Um, and even then, it's kind of funny because like it is twice the cost, but General Trahan. Giving you that reroll ones to wound is really cool. Um, in certain loadouts, it's just a little bit too bad how points dense he is. I don't have much to say about the shield captain at this stage. I would tell you that this is just something you don't typically take. Um, even things like, well, what if you have to fill out a battalion? Even then, you're still doing a shield captain on a bike for the most part. You save points by having him on foot, but 
you're giving up so much and they are so point dense that I feel like the options you have as a custodies player get limited pretty quick. Um, you don't have a lot, you know, like another list, you can kind of take something where you're like, this isn't as good, but I like it. Uh, in custodies list, you can't do that as much because if you do that too much or almost at all, you're going to be giving up a lot because you don't have that many bodies to begin with. So then there's the shield captain um, in Elaris Terminator armor. So exactly the same stat line, uh, except he has wound seven in the armor. And then he can take the axe, he can take the spear, he can take a misericordia, exactly like we just said, but he also gets the ballistus grenade launcher. Range 12, assault D3, strength four, minus three, one damage. Womp womp. The D3 is why, I think, it's not even really for the shield captain. It's for if you take like a unit of 10 terminators or six or seven and they're all shooting D3 shots and they're all minus three and some of those stratagems that they can do, it gets pretty ridiculous. I still think one damage is really silly. Um, shooting in custodians is obviously not the highlight of what they do, but you know, you go from the ax or spear for two damage down to this. It has higher AP, but less damage. Ah. Anyways, some of the abilities they have, uh, same thing, Inspirational Fighter, so it just means you get to reroll ones, and then Terminators, of course, have From Golden Light, which means it gets Deep Strike naturally. Um, Shield Captain in Terminator Armor becomes a little bit closer to useful with the recent FAQ changes to Deep Strike. Um, Terminators took another little bop on the nose where they already... They already were pretty darn cool, but just not as cool as Custodian Bikes. And then now that you're waiting till turn two to deep strike these guys who then come in foot slogging, if you face an opponent that has a really covered board and you're deep striking like just outside of your own deployment zone and then walking around six inches shooting unimpressive shooting, um, but paying a premium, then why, why'd you take the Terminators for the most part? So it's just a, it becomes a little bit more of a liability. Sorry that, you know, I predictably, by the way, I'm kind of hating on everything except for the bikes, but, um, well, I'll show you my custodian army in a second here. Shield captain on Dawn Eagle jet bike. So here's where we get into the real nice, the real nice meat and potatoes of the custodian army. Um, so same stat line as the uh, shield captain in terminator armor, almost across the board, except he's tough six with a movement of 14 inches. So over twice the movement, and then that one more toughness. So tough five is nice, but there's a lot of strength six in the game as well. Uh, strength five and six is kind of that like that DACA number where you can still face a lot of guns that have that kind of that strength. Um, but when you get the tough six, there's not as much DACA at strength seven and beyond. It gets to be a fewer shots. Like plasma is strength seven uh, in a lot of cases, anyways. It can go up to eight, of course. So being able to make your opponent have to wound you on a four or five means that you're taking a lot less saves. And then when you do take those saves, the shield captain has access to a couple of relics, two relics. One is a three plus plus, the other is a three plus plus with a rerollable charge. Um, or they just have a four plus plus and of course the two up to begin with. So bolters don't care. Uh, rending weapons can be a little bit scary, obviously, but even then you get to a three plus if you paid for the relic uh, or a relic. But I get ahead of myself. So they can take a Hurricane Bolter. That's their cheapest upgrade. It's 10 points, so it makes them 160. 12 shots um, at 12 inches or inside of that. And outside of that, six, six shots, which is still some pretty good DACA considering they hit on twos, rerolling ones. Um, or you can take the Salvo Launcher, which is two different kinds of missiles. There's the melt missile range 24, heavy one, strength 8, minus 4, D6 damage. Rerolls wounds, uh, rerolls damage, excuse me, or two wound. I got there against vehicles and then there's the flak burst missile which in all my games i've shot like twice range 24 heavy d3 strength 7 minus 1 d3 damage uh, add one to hit fly f uh, things with a fly rule it's heavy so when you move you go down to three um and then if it's like an actual fly you're actually at a four but with that plus one you then hit on a three you know it's like eh um for d3 damage but uh, off of d3 shots so there's just a little bit too much rng there you roll it you get one or two shots you're hitting once you're maybe wounding but it's only minus one so the flyer's getting like a four up save it's just it's it just is unfortunately just way too soft way too gentle whereas i just always opt for the melt a missile 
Um, you get to reroll to wound against a flyer. So if they're tough seven, um, rarely tough eight, obviously, but tough seven. Now you're rerolling to wound it, and then the D6 damage is just... They don't even get a save because it's minus four. So you're taking out less rolls. The only risky ro roll here with a melt -a missile is to hit. So against a flyer with uh, with supersonic or whatever, hard to hit, I guess, is the rule. Um, you're hitting on a four rerolling once. Pretty good odds. And then you're wounding, rerolling, and they don't get a save. And then you do D6 damage. It's just... It's a shame. The flak the flak burst missile should be something like D6 shots, because then you're now you're up in the RNGs this category of like five or six hits. And now it's hitting on threes, rolling one, so it's hitting more reliably. So sure they get their four up save, but oh well, I'm I'm getting them to fail two or three of those for D3 damage each. Even then, the numbers don't really stack up in your favor. It's just a lot better and closer to being more worth it. You know what I'm saying? Or make the flak burst assault. I agree with uh, fleet of three in the chat they uh so anybody on a bike also has the interceptor lance that's strength plus one minus three d3 damage reroll to wound on the charge absolutely incredible um the plus one strength is where a lot of custodians struggle so you go up to strength six but if something is tough seven or uh, or more you're wounding on fives re-rolling so shield captains by themselves have five attacks you know, you're still doing a pretty decent amount of damage, but if you're expecting that shield cap to drop down Mortarian significantly, they won't. A flyrant, they won't. Um, so instead, you need the shield captain to be aiding like a unit of five bikes or something along those lines to bring down the big targets. And even then, you probably don't bring it down unless you roll really hot and they roll poorly. You're just doing significant enough damage. Uh, they can take a Misericordia. And they anybody on a bike has the implacable vanguard rule, which means when they advance, they automatically go six, so a 20-inch movement. It's pretty cool, very situational. Um, they don't have assault weapons, so you're not getting to shoot or anything like that, and there is no stratagem to charge after advancing. So you're really only doing that to outpace something um, or to get on an objective when your opponent didn't really expect you to be able to do that. Kind of cool. So then we get to the basic uh, infantry, custodian guard. They have the Custody stat line, um, down to three attacks, though, leadership eight, save two plus, three wounds, but they're hitting on twos, wounding on, you know, bliss skill two, movement six. They can take the spear, they can take the sentinel blade, they can take the uh, axe, they can take a misericordia. Uh, I, I guess at this time is when I would tell you I would never take the misericordia on almost anything, um, unless you just absolutely have the points left over. It's really not that good. I know on paper it seems like it'd be cool. I'm just, I, I'm here to tell you, I've played a lot of games of Custodians. Uh, Custodians, excuse me, it'd be like, I don't know, 50 or 60 games. It's a lot. It's a lot. And I would tell you that the amount of times the the Misericordia had any kind of notable impact is like none. But scientifically, I'm urged to say one or two, just because I don't remember it or something. But like literally almost none. Um, so if you have those points left over, I guess... Uh, but otherwise, steer clear. They could take a Storm Shield, gives a 3++. Plus plus. I haven't done that in my Custodian Guard units. I run a Battalion, so I have three units of three, which is already really expensive. Um, the, the Shield makes it so they have to take the Sword, which isn't the worst thing in the world. It's just that you don't get the nice plus one strength, and there aren't as many cool stratagems that kind of align with that. We'll get to that in the back in a second here. Um, but the 3++ plus plus is pretty nice, and my, my Custodian Guard have a tendency to make that 4++ plus plus anyways, but of course we know how good a 3++ plus plus can be. So it's, it's definitely worth taking, it's worth considering. I'm going to experiment uh, with it myself, but I don't know. And then we get to the Wardens. So they have the same stat line, except they have one more attack, so they are four attacks. They are one more leadership, so leadership nine. Um, they can take the Axe, the Spear, and the Misericordia. I think they actually come with the Misericordia, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, they actually just come with it. Uh, they have a cool rule called Binding Oaths, so they just have a 6++ plus plus Feel No Pain. And that is pretty darn cool. So one more attack, access to the axes, and then they have a 6++ plus plus Feel No Pain. Still only just three wounds, though. Um, so on a hot dice, you're getting one more wound on each guy. Uh, but on average, you aren't getting one more wound on each guy. So it's one of those kind of things where it's like, it's pretty cool. 
um, as like w- just a, a R and Jesus moment in time type of thing, but as opposed to like really counting on it, not that much. I love the wardens. The models are absolutely gorgeous, as I would probably tell you about everything. I own ten of these guys, five which have axes. I'll show them in, a, in a, at the end here. I plan on using them um, in my league and for fun, but I don't think they're particularly very competitive. I think pre FAQ you could make an argument for them. Um, because there's a cool stratagem where you teleport home or in a unit, I guess, and get them real close. But otherwise, these guys are foot slogging, and they're tough five with three wounds, uh, just like any other Custodes guard, I guess. And I will tell you, that's very durable, but you're paying a, a little bit more for each, for these guys. And the worst part about them, in my opinion, is that they are elites. So they don't take up troop choice, uh, the, the troop slot, which means your battalion swells up a little bit. You still need infantry, and now you're also paying for Custodian Wardens. Um, or you're doing something weird where you're taking like, I think it's the Vanguard detachment, in which case now, what are your other elites? Mm. I guess it could be like a, a Vexless Praetor or something like that, which is kind of cool, but then you're taking two units of Wardens still, which is still expensive, and you're getting less command points back. So I'm starting to kind of, you can hear me waffling on this. Um, like I said, I'm going to play with them in my league, and maybe I completely take all this back, but for the most part, I would tell you they're fun definitely play with them um but as far as like does this round out your list and make it super amazing no it really doesn't and then we get over to the uh, vexless praetor who has different forms generally speaking this guy has more wounds uh and he does have the character rule so he's protected by that uh six wounds leadership is nine otherwise the same but four attacks um the first one in, in the in the terminate armor can of course just take the or has the Ballistus Grenade Launcher, can take a Misericordia. Um, and then it can take one of the three flags, one of the three banners, if you will. Uh, this affects everything Imperium Infantry. It says... Inf- oh, wow. Well, okay, so the the Vexilia um, allows you to reroll failed morale tests for friendly Imperium Infantry and Biker units. Uh, that's just exactly what it does. And then it also does something down here. So if Auxiliary Imperius models other than vehicles add one to their attack char- uh, Adeptus Custodius, excuse me, add one to their attacks characteristics whilst they're within six of any friendly Vexillus Praetors with this Vexilia. Vexilla, excuse me, not Vexilia. Then there's the Defensor. Imperium Infantry uh, get a five plus invul as long as they're within six. But, ho- or no, excuse me, wholly within nine. So that's okay. A lot of people immediately looked at that as like, um, they were like, well, that's going to be great with uh, with it guard. And it's like, mm. this is the most expensive flag, I believe. I think it's 50 points. We'll see that in the back here. Um, and a 5++. plus uh, plus. I mean, it doesn't help custodies, right? Because they all have a better save anyways. Uh, so people were like, oh no, I could put it with my Devastator units. Like, eh, still, even, I mean, yeah, you could, but most lists aren't looking to spend 150 points to give someone a 5 plus plus at least. There just seems to be better ways to go about doing that. Uh, then there's my personal favorite one, and I think the best one of all of them Vexilla Magnifica. Uh, it gives you minus one to hit against all custody units within six of any friendly, this thing. Um, this one doesn't specify vehicle or infantry or anything like that. It's just anything custodies. So that's kind of cool. Let me show you right there. It's also the the cheapest one, or at least one of the cheaper ones. It's 30 points. So that's the one that I'm going to be taking a lot, especially with my bikes. Um, They're already really hard to bring down, but if you're at minus one to hit, they just become that much harder to bring down. So then you could take the Vexilia, or I keep calling Vexilia, the Vexilus Praetor uh, just by himself. Um, this is like the, this guy just looks like a, a guard guy. So five wounds. He can take a spear, can take an axe, can take a Misericordia, uh, and then he has that, he has the banner itself. He can take a Storm Shield, but if he does, it kind of replaces all his weapons. And this is the cheaper option. Um, the thing I like about the Terminator is you can deep strike it. Of course, again, like I said, that becomes a little bit less cool with um, the FAQ, but still has its uses, I think. It's just that he's quite a bit more points. So I think you will be seeing more people running 
this guy like this just on foot and he'll just be advancing everywhere and he'll probably start pretty close to the edge of the deployment then he moves six plus d6 and all of a sudden he's in the middle of the field you can't deep strike turn one anyways so then turn two you move six plus d6 again and then his banner allows you to teleport homer and things like you know within six so pretty good reach alaris custodians uh, we talked a little bit about this with the shield captain very similar stat line they have four attacks they're tough five four wounds leadership nine two up save move six blow skill two weapon skill two they can take the axe the spear a misericordia and then they have the grenade launch like we talked about um they have a different rule here they, they can also deep strike like we talked about but they have slayers of ty uh, slayers of tyrants when models in this unit pile in and consolidate, they can move up to three inches towards the nearest enemy character, even if it's not the nearest enemy model, so long as they finish the move within one inch of an enemy unit. That's pretty cool. Oops, sorry, not showing them yet. Um, it has its uses. It's very handy. It's very strong, but it's not like um, it's not game breaking. It's not game defining. It's not the super most amazing thing in the whole world. It just really isn't. I wish I could tell you otherwise. Uh, Alaris Custodians do have fantastic stratagems, which we'll get to in a, at, at the back side of the book. Um, <laughs> I don't know if you guys heard that or not. Uh, anyways, lost my train of thought. Um, people are taking these, and there are people that make arguments that they are as good or perhaps even better than the bikes um, I would tell you that just raw stat line wise they are not that does not mean they're not playable um, they have their uses they're pretty cool you get to drop in and shoot your grenade launcher and your axe or your spear you should probably take them with the axe and then they have some pretty cool stratagems where like they can target characters um, they are infantry so you can use the tangle foot grenade stratagem as well they have some really cool disruptive stuff um, everyone at first kind of globbed onto their unique strategy, which I think is pretty fun, where they can break up into individual units. Like you drop in a unit of eight, pull off this strategy, and all of a sudden it's eight individual units of Terminators, which is cool because if at first glance you think about it, that means you have to shoot them individually as well. So if, and nothing really drops custodians. Like there's nothing out there that just like absolutely will swipe the floor with them or whatever. You're always getting at least a four up in save. And if they are doing a lot of mortal wounds, that's the worst thing that can happen. Then you probably should have dropped them in that area or you're just being very brave or stupid. Maybe sometimes both. Um, so they're cool. They're not bad. I haven't played that much with them and I plan on exper uh, experimenting more with them. Deny Overwatch as well in chat. Yep. Good point. So they have cool stuff like that. Um, but in terms of like, I'm going to a tournament, I'm playing five or six games. Do I take the Alaris Terminators? Uh, the Venerable Contemptor Dreadnought. This is just a Contemptor Dreadnought. There is nothing special about it whatsoever in terms of unique to Custodes at all. They just gave it to Custodes because, you know, otherwise they're literally printing a codex that has like five guys in it. Um, it has adamantic shielding, which is just a five plus invul, but it does not have the rule that gets it plus one invul to be in a custodian's detachment. I think that's a huge missed opportunity. Um, it can take a melta. It can, ha it has an assault cannon. I'm not really going to describe too much of this because it's in everything. Uh, this is just a contempt or dreadnought. Um, I would also just tell you it's a hard, hard pass. It's an expensive dreadnought. There are dreadnoughts doing things much better out there. Um, Leviathan Dreadnoughts, Mortis, etc., etc., for a lot less, or maybe more, but they're just doing that much more. Um, in the Custodian list, it doesn't make a lot of sense. You can't improve that that invul, and yeah, you can deep strike it, I believe, but why? Why are you? Um, the Custodians themselves do the same job, only better. It does give you that multi melta, but even then the melta missile on a on a salvo from a salvo launcher is probably well it's as good or better is i guess what i'm trying to say um so hard pass hard pass and i'm sorry if that hurts some people's feelings then we get to the virtus praetors and these guys are you know you've heard it these are the best um this is the big the big winner from the codex uh so same stat line as that shield captain on the bike uh, i talked about earlier 14 inch movement uh, down to four attacks as opposed to five 
These guys come in at 90 points with the Hurricane Bolter. So a unit of five is 450 points. That gets you 20 strength six rerolling to wound minus three D3 damage attacks on the charge. And if they have Hurricane Bolters, which is what I recommend you do with them, five of these guys put out 60 shots, hitting on twos, rerolling ones if you have a shield captain nearby, and you should. And that will absolutely mulch any and all of the screens in the game. Now, someone on YouTube is immediately going to hear that and say, Jeff, I am screening my army with space marines in units of 10, and I have them in cover, and I'm casting powers on them. It does not kill them. Okay, sure. In that situation, you're right. Uh, but guardsmen, um, nerglings, crute, you know, everything. Termagants, you just, they pick up the unit. You can almost, you can usually just kind of ask them, even if they have 20 or 30. Uh, if, if they're not, you know, if they're just getting a five or six up save and you have 60 shots hitting on twos, really ones wounding on threes, you can almost just assuredly be like, do you mind just picking that up? Cause I'm going to hit you 59 or 58 times and I'm going to wound you, you know, 45, uh, or 40 times. And then if you're getting a six up, you're not going to do that. Um, they can also take the salvo like we were talking about earlier, but it's just too expensive per guy. They are only four wounds. I say only, not because I think they should they should have more, but just rather you don't invest too much into that. Um, and then they have Implacable Vanguard as well. Um, but these are bikes. They have Fly. Uh, they're amazing. They're absolutely amazing. Um, I have not yet played a game of Custodes without them. In fact, I played one league game where I took the Knight Porphyrian and it just shat the bed, didn't do much. And it was my five Custody uh, Virtus Praetor bikes and a shield captain or two that won the game for me, basically. Just cleaning up the backfield, making big assaults, and just mulching stuff. Um, I would tell you that they take a little bit of experience. Um, they, at first glance, seem like the kind of unit you just put on the table and probably win with. But it takes a lot of experience to kind of figure out what it is that they, they are afraid of and what brings them down and what they can take on. Um, and how much you need to pour into something to get to get the result you want. I really like deep striking them, um, or I did at least before the FAQ. So they almost always had the first shot. Um, and, and when they do that, they kind of remove the DACA from the table um, or the screens. And then they get to start assaulting stuff and they just start uh, wreaking havoc on the backfield. They're really powerful that way. Um, I prefer running them in units of five. Um, I think this is a really good number because three can kind of melt a little bit too fast. The damage is good, but it doesn't seem to clean up stuff or take down a big thing, whereas 5 cleans up all little things and ki can kill a big thing by itself, which is absolutely incredible. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, oh, and then like the their counter charge, well, like their I charge in your phase stratagem is one of the more powerful mind blowers you can put on your opponent. It's really fun. Um, I'll talk more about that in the kind of the general consensus of the entire army. Venerable Land Raider, I'm not going to go over that either. That's just a Venerable Land Raider. I would tell you that if you have this painted up in Custody Gold and you're forging that narrative as you rumble across the field in this beautiful tank, um, you go, girl. You do, you do you, all those kind of sayings. I would not do it. We have access to Deep Strike as a stratagem, but also just our Terminators have it. Uh, we move just about as fast as this thing does by its, uh, you know, anyways i guess it moves no it just moves 10 inches yeah um its fire output is completely marginal and then it's it, its resiliency is incredible that's awesome but i think it once again the the ability to make these things special to custodies would have been to give it the five up invul or a six up no give it a five up invul and then say that in a pure det detachment it goes down to a four up now, all of a sudden, you're paying that 350 points for something that feels really awesome. As it is, an elite army, a 350-point block to maybe get you somewhere? No. Nope. And that's it. That's all the stuff. And I won't even go over the armory, because we actually already covered everything. Um, I do want to talk about their special rules, because they are special. So they have the Emperor's Chosen. That's the rule I was talking about where they get to improve their invul by one to a maximum of three. 
um, if they're in a peer detachment. Then sworn guardians means that all custodian units, I believe it says that. Well, anybody that has this rule, which is all the infantry and all the bikes, um, they have object objective secured. So this army has it throughout its characters, throughout its bikes, throughout its guys. Almost anything you put on objective has objective secured. Um, a lot of people downplay objective secured. It's not what it was in 7th, where it was just absolutely out of control. Um, but it's very, very powerful. And I would say it's incredibly intelligent that, that it's included at such... It's just all over the place for custodies, because if they didn't have this, it would be a real big pain in the ass. Okay. So then we get into the stratagems. Um, from the Golden Light, the Comets, the one or three for one unit or two to deep strike. Unflinching. Use this in your uh, opponent's charge phase. Instead of hitting on sixes in Overwatch, they hit on fives. I find it pretty nice. Um, what I like about this one is that it's for Adeptes Custodes units. It doesn't say infantry or bikes, which means you can use it on a bike unit. So shooting-wise, if they're charging your three guys, unless it's some really incredibly desperate situation or you have a lot of command points for some reason... You should not use this. It's only one command point, but it's still... Here's six shots. Ba -ba -ba -bow. But if it's like an individual character, and if they make it in, you're in a lot of trouble, that's kind of cool. But if it's a big bike unit of like five or ten bikes, and you're hitting on fives instead of sixes, you're going to just... Like if it's a Bloodletter Bomb or Zanger Bomb coming after you, you're going to kill half of it before it gets into you, which is amazing. And not everyone knows that they have this stratagem. So it's not... I don't, I don't mean to advocate for like a gotcha moment, but it's kind of funny because people are just like... Oh, you can do that. And you're like, yeah, I can. Get them. Unleash the Lions is two command points. That's that Terminator one where they get to break up individual individual units. It does say at the start of your movement phase, so keep that in mind. So that's kind of cool. If it was at the end of your movement phase, it would be more meh. But at the beginning, that means they get to shatter and, and move into different directions. Uh, Tangle Foot Grenade. This is one of the best stratagems in the book for me. It's one command point. It comes off of your infantry, so that's going to be your wardens, your custodian guard, uh, shield captains on feet, um, or even uh, Trahan can do this. It's anything within 12 that doesn't have the fly rule. You chuck a grenade either at the beginning of movement or at the beginning of the charge phase. The beginning of movement is very situational. I wish I would have remembered this more often. Because there's, you know, been there's just a number of times where um, someone's like, I need to get on that objective, and you could have been like, Tanglefoot grenade, they're not getting there, that saves you a point. Now you can charge something else. Um, or in the charge phase, which is where I always remember it, and it's super amazing, they drop in that big bomb of Zangors or Bloodletters, Tanglefoot grenade minus D6 to the charge, and all of a sudden, you know, it is a 3D6 charge, but you rolled that five or six, and now it's essentially a 2D6 charge. Uh, at nine inches it just kind of equals the playing field and that's if they have a 3d6 if they don't have that um, you can just completely rock their charge it's awesome ever vigilant two command points uh it's 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 um what's it called intercept it is off a of Cust uh, adeptus custodes infantry unit i've unfortunately cheated a couple of my opponents it felt pretty cool though because i was shooting them with like all these bolter shots off my bikes and then only later did i go uh um, this one is also one of those kind of underwhelming ones that are very situational. If someone drops like a smash, uh, space Marine captain or something like that, or Lieutenant who's got like the Inferno pistol and a hammer and he, they drop him first and they're all excited about it. And you've got your unit of three or so, um, custodian guard. Sure. Do this. You're hitting on threes. If there's a shield captain nearby, you're reeling ones. Um, it's two damage each. So, and it's minus one. So if they, if he fails like two or three, four ups, then he dies. Um, and hitting on threes or only ones is pretty accurate. So that's like about the only time you should ever use this. Um, I unfortunately have fallen for the trap a few times where I'm like, oh, your blood letters came down. Take these six shots. And you kill like two guys or one. And you're like, okay, not worth the two command points. Three command points. Vexilla teleport Homer. Uh, the wording on this is that you just have to place them within six at the end of the movement phase. It's a deep strike into that into that area. And more than three away from your opponent. So not nine. So there's some really cheeky stuff you can do with this. You already, you already want that banner to give you the minus one to like your three units of bikes. and then you, Or your two. And then you deep strike in one or two more units of bikes. Now they're with, within six but three away. Um, 
and you can now get like a guaranteed charge on your opponent if they're close enough that kind of stuff otherwise at three command points probably not doing this pre faq i think it was really useful post faq not as much open the vaults your standard one or three command point to get one extra relic or to get two i use this all the time because i usually have the company commander and my guard detachment as the warlord so i have to buy the three plus plus and three plus plus rerollable charge for my bikes um custodies have some pretty good relics i think you're very reliably buying those two um or just one more if you make that your primary detachment but going beyond that like if it is your primary detachment i would only buy the one additional relic the others are like kind of cute but i don't think you uh do too much there avatars of the emperor it's one command point use the stratagem at the beginning of the morale phase choose an adeptus custodius unit from your army other than a vehicle you can use that unit's leadership characteristic when taking morale tests for friendly imperium units within six helps your guard friends it's just one command point which is really nice and smart by them because then it does have some use to you if they're you know leadership six or seven and they lost a couple guys, and you're worried about losing that final base, where well, you can jump their leadership up to eight or nine. Pretty cool. Shoulder the Mantle. It's one command point. If you lose your Warlord, um, one of your shield captains, you choose a shield captain, they become your Warlord, you select a Warlord trait, and it very specifically says you did not lose your Warlord. Pretty amazing um, for one command point, because it just says your Warlord. It doesn't say your Custodian Warlord or anything like that. So your company commander, uh, whoever it is, you've 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 allied someone in, they die, boom, it's one of your shield captains now. And their Willard traits are pretty sick. Networked machine spirits, I almost don't even want to read this. I'm not going to read it. It's terrible. One command point, indomitable guardians. Um, use this in your opponent's fight phase after an enemy that is charged is fought. Choose an adeptus custodius unit from your army that is within three inches of an objective and fight with it next so two command points is what you usually spend to interrupt and fight um out of sequence but in this case if you're within three of an objective you can spend one command point and fight with those guys i've never used it because i almost always forget about it but it does have its uh its moments inspire fear one command point um it's just plus one to the morale test for your opponent if they are within uh three inches of your adeptus custodius units other than a vehicle i don't know it's kind of cool use the strategy at the beginning of the morale phase so the problem with the wording of that is you don't your, your opponent doesn't have to roll see that they failed it then you add the plus one like some people do have uh, some codexes do have instead you have to be like i am going to do this to make sure that you lose a guy or you lose all the guys i want you to lose something like that it's okay. It's just the plus one leadership stuff when it's just by itself doesn't just it doesn't do that much. That's why the Dark Eldar Codex is kind of cool because it has a lot of like you can get up to plus four or five, and now all of a sudden they're rolling a five or six, they're losing ten guys, and that's really impressive. Sentinel Storm, two command points. Use a stratagem at the end of your opponent's shooting phase. Choose one of your Adeptus Custodius units that is within one inches of an enemy unit. That unit you choose can shoot with its Sentinel Blades as if it were your shooting phase. sentinel storm so like the only time i would ever use this is if i had a unit of like four or five sentinel blade guys but why do i have them i don't but hypothetically why does jeff have them i don't know and then you're shooting with a really unimpressive gun i that no burst missile nets one command point Use a stratagem in your shooting phase when choosing a unit of Virtus Praetors from your army to make their range attacks. If they all fire flak burst missiles at the same target with the fly keyword, you can reroll failed wound rolls for these attacks. It's all right. It's one command point. But like I was saying earlier, you should never be shooting that missile anyways. Spark of Divinity, I'm not even... No, it's something else. Never mind. Uh, use a stratagem when an enemy psyker manifests a psychic power within 12 of an adeptus custodius infantry or adeptus custodius biker unit uh, from your army you could deny the witch test as if it were a psyker it's one command point it's really really nice plant the vexilla it just increases the range for that banner by six but you cannot have moved it's one command point it's all right 
Piercing Strike. Use a stratagem when you select an Adeptus Custodius unit from your army to attack in the fight phase. Add one to the wound rolls for that army's guardian spears until the end of the phase. One command point. It's absolutely massive. Like I said, I use my Custodian Guard uh, in a battalion, so plus one to wound is really nice. Um, if they're tough four or five and you want to wound on twos, you can go ahead and do that. If they're higher, they're like tough 19. No, not 19, but like, so they're tough eight. Uh, normally you'd be winning on fives. You get it down to four. All of a sudden you're pretty reliably starting to put the hurt to someone like Mortarian who's tough seven. Uh, but it's pretty cool. I do it almost all the time. Inescapable Vengeance. Use a stratagem when you select the unit of Alaris Custodians from your army to make their attacks in the shooting phase. They can target enemy characters with their attacks even if they are not the closest enemy model. So you're shooting them with your axes, you're shooting with your grenade launcher. It's really cool if they have soft characters behind a line. Thinking of like Death Guard guys or Eldar Bone Singers and stuff like that. Um, guard anything. Yeah, okay, that's nice. Uh, Wisdom of the Ancients. Anything within... Uh, it's one command point. Use a stratagem at the start of your fight phase, or excuse me, uh, of any phase. Select an... En uh, Custodes Dreadnought from your army till the end of the phase. You can reroll hit rolls of one for friendly Adeptus Custodes units within six of it. But you should have a shield captain. Castellan Strike. This just makes your axes minus three. One command point. Kind of nice. Concussion Grenade. One command point. Use the stratagem in your shooting phase when choosing a unit of Alaris Custodians from your army to attack until the end of the phase. Their ballistic grenade launchers, launchers have an AP characteristic of zero and infantry the units that are hit by these attacks are stunned until the end of your turn. They cannot fire overwatch and your opponent must subtract one from hit rolls made for this unit. If it was just they couldn't fire overwatch, this would be an absolute garbage stratagem in my opinion. But minus one to hit is also nice. It makes it pretty cool. It's kind of funny that the AP goes to zero, though. It's just like, just give it to him. Just let, let him do damage and have a buff. You're paying the command point for it. Just let him do it. Eyes of the Emperor. You can uh, redraw tactical objectives for one command point. Victor of the Blood Games. Use this stratagem. When you set up an Adeptus Custodius character from your army during deployment, you can reroll one hit roll, one wound roll, or one save roll for this model in each turn. Let me show it. Shh. Nope, it's right here. Meep. Camera's at a bit of a weird angle. Really powerful. It's two command points, but because it's before the game starts, you could do this multiple times. So if you have two or three shield captains and you're just feeling really awesome, go ahead and do it on all three of them. I personally wouldn't do that. Um, I've been doing the relics on two of my shield captains and then Victor of the Blood Games on the one that doesn't have a relic. So he has kind of a free reroll. Um... But it's, it's awesome. It's just characters. So you could put this on Trahan if you really wanted to. You could put it on a couple of shield captains, like I was saying. It's, it's, it's nice. Even in death, um, if someone is slain but they haven't swung yet, pay two, man two command points and they get the swing. Uh, it's a character, though. Yeah. Avenge the Fallen. This is one of the best stratagems in the Codex. One command point. Um, basically, for every guy that's died in the unit... The remaining guys in that unit get one attack for each of those guys that have died. Um, so, for instance, if I had a unit of five bikes, they all have four attacks, right? Well, if I lose three of them and I use this stratagem in the fight phase, the last two guys get plus three attacks. So they both have seven attacks now for a total of 14 attacks off of two guys. That is pretty awesome. Um, this obviously scales up and has some really funny sweet spots. So if you have a unit of 10... I'm just going to use the example of bikes. That would be 40 attacks. But if you lost, let's say, three of them, the remaining seven have seven attacks. Now I'm doing math on stream, but the point is it gets pretty awesome. Uh, so it rewards bigger units, but I found it to be really mega clutch when you do have that unit of five go down to three or four, and then your opponent wasn't expecting it, but all of a sudden you're hitting harder, actually, in some cases, or at least you're hitting uh, comparably. Yep, Fleet is saying he uses it on a seven-man unit. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Bringer of the Emperor's Justice. Uh, use this stratagem when an Adeptus Custodius unit from your army is chosen to attack in the fight phase. Each time you make a hit roll of a six-plus for a model in that unit during this phase, it can, if it was targeting a heretic, a Stardust unit, 
immediately make an extra attack against the same unit using the same weapon. If it was targeting a black legion unit, it does this on a 4+. plus. These attacks can't generate more attacks. It's only one command point, and there's a lot of Chaos Space Marines out there. So I have not used this yet because Jeff is a bit of a dum-dum. Um, it's great. I haven't faced Black Legion because then I would feel really stupid, but you just should. Exploding sixes absolutely happen. A lot of these guys have a decent number of attacks, especially those bike units like I was just saying. If you're just charging into a Chaos Space Marine unit, you pop this, they're gone. They're going to be They're going to be toast. Stooping Dive, this is the one that everyone knows about. It's three command points. The gist of it is at the end of your opponent's assault phase, you uh, can declare a charge with your custodian bikes. So that's either a unit, it's a shield captain, but it's not both. It's not multiple units, just one. Um, if you make the charge, you get, to, you get to do the first charge first. So where this becomes mega awesome is if your opponent like wants to charge your five Virtus Praetor bikes... But then behind those bikes is a shield captain or two. The The fact that you get to swing first means oftentimes they charge in, the shield captain charges, he kills three or four of the guys, and all of a sudden the damage output that your opponent was counting on goes down the drain, and then they don't kill your, your bikes or do any significant damage, and then the bikes kill them in the return. Um, or what I often find happens, they just don't even charge you because they're just terrified of this counter charge. Um, it's amazing. It's definitely worth the three command points, and you should be using it. I'm running out of steam, guys. I, I streamed for like nine hours today. But I told you guys I would do this, and I got to do it. The Relics of Terra. I'm not going to go through each of these because of what I just said. I'm falling apart here a little bit. I will tell you that it's Eagle's Eye, which is the 3++, plus plus, um, and it can just go on any model. So you... Yeah, so you could take it on a character. You could take it on one of your Terminators or something like that, but you should take it on your Shield Captain. Then there's the Arc Aquilus. That's the one you should always take. That can only go on a biker, but it's a 3 plus plus, and he gets to reroll the charge. Huge. Absolutely huge. There's a couple other kind of cute ones, like the Praetorian Plate allows you to uh, name a character, and if they ever are within one inch of some of the opponent, this, this guy gets to teleport there as well and help them fight. But it doesn't say anything like he swings first or something like that. So it's just like you're there. It's kind of cool. Um, but but because of the other ones, I just don't know that you ever take this. The Obliteratum is a... Uh, it replaces your grenade launcher. It's Assault 1, Strength 10, Minus 4, D3 damage. D3. One shot. It's terrible. I, I mean... Make it D3 shots and make it do D3 damage. Give us something scary. Um, I don't know. And then a lot of the other ones, like there's one that gives you deny. Um, you can replace the banners, but I didn't understand any of those because they're like pretty bad attacks and they replace... They're just not very good. Let me just put it that way. One of them is a deny one though, I think. It's okay. Okay. People like the um, gatekeeper sword, but but then you've taken the gate, you've taken the sword. So I don't understand. Um, you Overwatch in a three plus rather than a six, and it's rapid fire three, strength four, minus one, two damage. So uh, it's kind of cool. All of a sudden the DACA comes flying out um, in Overwatch. Yeah. Auto pass morale is big. Is that one of them? Is there a fearless one? Because the others are just re-roll. Fearless is okay. It's generally kind of funny though, because custodies don't really. I it just doesn't really matter that much at all. All the relic banners do that. Okay, so all the relic banners give you fear. Uh, fearless. That's okay. Um, I think where that gets a little bit mitigated is you already have access to stuff like that. So. I mean, if you're doing like a 30-man conscript line still, then the custodians have some cool stuff for you because then that being fearless is very powerful. But like a 10-man infantry unit, don't care. Um, almost anything less than a 30-man conscript unit, I guess I'm saying fearless does not matter that much. Not for what you're paying for it. 
because remember that's on a hundred point character with at least 30 points but maybe 50 points and now you're also spending a relic on that so i have not seen it in a list i'm sure they're out there but i would just tell you to just i don't know hey man if that excites you don't let me rain on your parade warlord traits these are all good they have good warlord traits um friendly custodies infantry biker and dreadnoughts within 12 uh of your charge phase can can all make heroic interventions so everything basically other than a land raider can make a heroic intervention to your warlord that's pretty awesome it's i don't know that it's kind of one of those things where you know because you can pick your warlord trait in the game so if you're facing like a guy that's like i took all of all assault demons you'll be like yeah okay i'll take this warlord trait that's pretty cool peerless warrior each time you make a hit roll of a six plus in the fight phase, they can immediately make an extra attack. Same thing. They don't generate more attacks. Superior creation, you have a five plus feeling of pain. Impregnable mind, you get to uh, deny one power on a plus one, uh, as if you were a psyker. Radiant mantle, your opponent must subtract one from hit rolls that target your warlord. Emperor's companion, you can reroll the dice for the damage inflicted by your warlord's attacks. Okay. By the way, radiant mantle. There is a relic that makes characters minus one to hit you as well as something else it does. And then you can have the minus one hit banner for a total of minus three against characters and minus two against everybody else. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay. Uncle Jeff's got your back. Um, I'm just kidding. It's it's a silly combo, but it's also kind of funny. Minus three to hit's just rare in the game. So whenever it happens, it's a little bit funny and worth noting, I guess. Um, and then we get to the points. We already talked about this. I guess one thing to note is the storm shield's 15 points. So if you do the sword and, and the shield, uh, the sentinel blade's 9 points. The shield has 24 points. That custodian guard goes up to 64 points as opposed to 52. It's 12 points more. Is it worth that to go from a 4 plus to a 3 plus plus on one model? I don't think so. But again, it's one of those things where if you have extra points and you've got it modeled, maybe try it out. Or if you're doing a big unit. If you're doing a big unit of like 10, then yeah, that 3++ plus plus really matters because someone could shoot some ridiculous, you know, last cannon, last cannon line at you and you're like, all right, 3+, plus, 3+, plus, 3+. Plus. And remember, you're often re-rolling that as well. Uh, yeah, the Dreadnought is, let's see, 130 points with a Dreadnought weapon of, so it makes it 170. And then, like, the multi melta is 27, so it's 197. It's 200 plus points. No, it's not my new living room. It's my old living room, cluttered as all get out. So that's that. And then, like I said, this book is beautiful. It's got great fluff. Um, I love what they're doing where they take each unit and they kind of just describe it. They talk about all, all their battles. I liked the note they made about uh, Constantine Valdor, talking about how he disappeared. Nobody knows where he is. Um, it was cool that they talked about General Trahan Valoris yep. being a complete badass. Um, he won the Blood Games twice or something like that. Not bad. Very cool. So that is the Codex. I want to show you guys some of my models real quick. And then I'll take a little bit of a Q&A and we'll wrap up. Um, in the ever-evolving learning process that is me, I will say that in the future I should remember that this is a crap ton of talking and it really tires me out. So I apologize that once again I petered out, even though this has only been an hour long. Um, but we're in the process of moving, so I wanted to do this now as opposed to potentially have it delayed quite a bit. Um, and I did think it would be a lot less... Uh, which it is. It's an hour less than we normally do. So anyways, that's just me giving my reasoning. Now, yeah, I'm just going to do this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this. I'm going to put... I try not to be too crude, but this is basically putting your dick on the table. Anna doesn't approve of me saying that, but... It is what it is. How do you how do you zoom back? You can't. Then I won't. Back off, woman. 
Don't tell me to back off from my camera when I just saw you trying to move this without untightening it. I'm going to start it. swinging it around. You're going to break it. If we're lucky. You can buy me a new one. Yeah. All right, there's no good way to show this, I guess. Uh, I was going to zoom back, but we can't. So I'm going to hold stuff up. <laughs> no, I gotta, I'll do it with the webcam as well, do. That's not this webcam. No, it is. Yeah, it's just the smaller. Oh, but then it goes all... Now it's not... Oh, my God, you guys. I, like, pulled it out. Okay, that's the image we're stuck on forever. Lol. I'll just show... I'll just pull up some of it and show it to you guys. So this is uh, painted by Brandon Miner at Frontline Gaming. He is a fantastic artist. Yeah, this is this is not working. I'm gonna have to take pictures and show you guys. Anyways, this is the Forge World uh, Don Eagle jet bike, which I didn't think I would like as much as the new Games Workshop ones. Yeah, I'm just gonna take pictures, guys. I tried, I tried, but this is not working. I will show this guy. I'm always like, I'm not gonna show any, and then I'm like, yeah, let's show this guy. So How is this not, not showing? Huh? That's not no, just my like me doing this is not as good as I thought it would be. That's okay. This is as good as it, as it gets. So I did get this dreadnought. It's got beta rules right now. Um, I'm hoping they're a lot better. It needs to be better. But this is one of the, this is actually this model is actually part of the reason why I even started collecting custodies. I love it gigantic spear it's a uh, like three times the length of a normal guy um but i i like tonight we'll put this up on instagram so for those of you watching on stream um you can you can just check it out there it's just in control tv on instagram but i'm really proud of this collection and then we're gonna after we move which is this weekend i'm gonna do a full-on photo shoot with the whole thing like we've done for my Terranids, adeptus mechanicus um and the warlord titan and stuff like that so i will show it off sorry that at the end of the stream we got really janky we uh made a reference to the male genitalia i managed to get the webcam completely frozen and i tried to show you guys my models but instead it ended up not, not working out very well so i do apologize but if you guys have any questions i'd love to answer a few questions this can be strategy this can be um anything any kind of advice at all we'll try to keep it custody centric and then while you're asking questions in the chat i would just remind you that i will be this will be up on youtube hopefully tonight if if cobra is still around if not then it'll be up there pretty shortly thereafter and any kind of comments in the youtube video i will be responding to all of them until they stop being comments in the in the chat on the youtube video Up oh, there's Cobra. So yeah, we'll have the vi we'll have the video up tonight then. So yeah, any questions, guys? And then otherwise, we'll wrap it up. For the new FAQ, how critical do you think screens are for custodies? Uh, not at all, for the most part. The screen function is not necessary. The ability to spread out and own space on your half of the table is always necessary. So. I like to use, like I was saying, I use the battalion, so my custodian guard units will fan out, take cover, and then create, you know, big, I don't know how much measurement, but, you know, 20, 20 inch blob circles of you can't drop here for the most part. Um, and then behind that is my soft underbelly, usually my guard detachment, um, which cannot take a lot of punishment, but has mortars to kill stuff in, indirectly, um, and then also generates a lot of command points for me. Custodies, I don't think, need to care too much about screens because whatever's charging you is is not as powerful as the most powerful warriors of the empire. Of the emperor. Thanks so much for doing this. Do you have any advice for playing custodies against Tau gun lines? It's one of the few matchups I have struggled with using a similar list to your Adepticon one. Um, well, Tau do, have, they, Tau do present a bit of an issue. It's kind of the, the same-ish answer where I kind of remind you that if you're playing on tables that don't have cover, um, 
and you're not able to hide your units at all, then you're playing on a really bad table. I would tell you that a lot of times in those kind of matchups, you can reliably play to the game or play to the objectives rather. So park some custody guard units on objectives, outscore your opponent that way, and then threaten them with a big hammer unit, like a big unit of bikes or two or three units of bikes. They should not be able to destroy your bike units in one or two volleys. If they are, they rolled hot and you rolled poorly, or you weren't able to hide at all. Because if they're putting SMS into you um, indirectly, you're getting a two-up save, so who cares? It's not going to do much to you at all. Um, and then the rest of their shooting is fairly inaccurate, so one of the things you can start to use would be the minus one to hit. Any kind of minus one to hit destroys Tau and destroys Guard. Um, they can put velocity trackers on their stuff, which, if you have bikes, basically cancels that out. So that could be a bit of an issue as well. Do you just go forward with the shield captain, or do you protect them with non-characters? Um, I use them to buff my big bike units for the most part. At the end of the game, what more often than not happens is that the bike unit was used as insulation to get my shield captains into you. Uh, and then depending on what I'm facing will determine how aggressive I am. So if they have like a big smite battery back there, I'm probably not uh, too eager to throw my custodies into them because more often than not, like, you know, they'll smite off a shield captain or two and that's that's a huge chunk of my offensive output. Um, I play them pretty tactically, to be honest with you. What I like about them is that anybody that comes after me uh, more often than not is not doing a lot of damage to me and then is finding themselves within charge range and shooting range of like the majority of my custody stuff. And people always underestimate the custodian guard units because they're just not what people talk about. But um, they hit hard and they do well. They're pretty good. Also, what do you think about a supreme command of three in the Admech army? Um, I think I think it does a lot for you. I know what you're getting at. Uh, any kind of counter charge um, is really, really good for Adeptus Mechanicus. I still like the Castellan bots. I still like Call. Onagers are good. Rangers are good. Um, and then if you supplement that with some anti-charge or the ability to clean up stuff from clogging up your Castellan bots, that's a big deal. I have uh, four Armagers being painted up right now, and my intention is to try three Armagers with Adeptus uh, Mechanicus for that very reason. Gets you some mobility, gets you some anti-tank, not that they necessarily need that, and then it can, of course, anything that wants to charge you is like terrified of them. Pretty cool. So is that it? No more questions, guys? Okay. Uh, so I hope you enjoy that that still picture of my rock-hard glistening chest uh, and that beautiful sweatshirt. I'll answer this one final thing. So he says, will you continue to take assassins in the new Vanguard without HQs now for zero command points? I guess the battalion plus five command points makes up for it. The assassins are usually the heroes of my list, netting me these recon and behind enemy line points. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm going to at least take them to the next tournament or two to see if they can continue to score and do what I want with them. My assassins were never really about damage. They were about scoring while everyone's really preoccupied with all my custodies, and I love them for it. Um, Atomic Lich asked if he could build a Custodes army on a budget. Yeah, you pretty much could. Um, you get three bikes in a box for, I think it's 50 bucks, which is, of course, not cheap, but in Warhammer terms, it's not bad because you buy, like, three or four of those boxes and you basically have half your army. Um, and then I highly recommend that if you're going to buy Custodian Guard units because you want to do battalions or something like that, that you do it on eBay. There's people selling custodian guard on the sprue um for you know 25 30 40 percent off uh, sometimes you can find even more ridiculous deals there so that's you can buy like a whole list pretty quickly there fuck it. My, james too good harden in here harding what's up buddy thank you for the sub man okay that seems to be it guys i really appreciate y'all tuning in this was uh I do apologize. Like I said, I'm always learning. I think I will next time do this with a gallon of water next to me or a syringe of adrenaline, something like that. Um, hopefully you're still entertained and you were informed on some stuff and I will be checking the YouTube video comments. So if you have additional questions or conversation about custodians, let's take it there. 
Um, I love talking about these guys and I could do it for another 500 hours and I hope to do that. So thank you guys for tuning in. This has been the Custodius Codex Review. It'll go up on YouTube immediately after and I will see you guys soon. Have a great day.